Hello everybody and welcome to Jeff the Pharmacist. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, so today I want to talk about how uh, GoodRx works. So um, GoodRx is basically a discount card. So um, there's millions of discount cards out there or hundreds or whatever. There's lots of them. The ARP has discount cards for prescription drugs. The um, different political organizations have them. Um, what they are basically is they're for people that have to pay cash for a prescription and um, sometimes the the pharmacy has a has to use a high list price as part of the kind of the scheme that they use for reimbursement and unfortunately uh, sometimes customers actually come up and they pay cash if they don't have a discount card or they don't ask about it or they don't know to ask and so um, GoodRx has kind of used that as a way to kind of create this new product that can you can tell what GoodRx's discount card is at different pharmacies and it shows up on an app. Now GoodRx is not uh, necessarily the lowest price on everything uh, so you might have another discount card that's actually cheaper than GoodRx. Um, so GoodRx is not uh, the lowest price. They can't guarantee that this is the lowest price if you had you know 50 different discount cards and you were running each one don't do this but if you're running each one you might find one that's 50 cents cheaper ten dollars cheaper whatever so uh, the reason there are these discount cards is it's a way for pharmacy benefit managers to kind of make extra money and in a way it's a way for pharmacies to sort of charge a more reasonable price for customers and it's in these um it's in contracts with these insurance companies and or we call them pharmacy benefit managers, which are companies that work with um, like Blue Cross Blue Shield or Aetna. And they actually, their job is to keep costs down for prescription drug co coverage. So they, they work with companies like Pfizer and generic drug companies and they get, you know, they get rebates and they kind of set the price in the pharmacy for people that have that drug coverage. And if the pharmacy wants to take to work with that company, they also have to honor discount cards. So it's the and the way that the discount card company makes money is they charge the pharmacy a processing fee. And GoodRx actually charges a pretty high fee um, compared to a lot of other um, a lot of other companies. They charge like like I've seen prescriptions where the pharmacy might make a dollar and GoodRx makes five dollars. And maybe the maybe the, the cost of the drug was two dollars. Now usually um, on most prescriptions, the cost of the drugs, uh, the the amount of money that the pharmacy makes is like ten to twenty percent. Uh, but there are some cases where the prescription drugs are very cheap, and then um, because there's a dispensing fee in there, the the product might be nine dollars or something. So it might be a two dollar drug. The pharmacy gets one dollar and GoodRx gets five dollars and in my opinion the pharmacy is the one that's doing most of the work they're the one carrying the drug and doing all the work so sometimes it can feel a little bit unfair but i do think that GoodRx is a way for people to save money i think that they have uh, created an amazing kind of new company and uh but all it is really is a discount card GoodRx does not pay any money to the pharmacy uh GoodRx um uh, doesn't really work directly with any pharmacies. They work with an, with pharmacy benefit managers. I think they work with Express Scripts, which is a specific one, and they um, charge a pharmacy a fee for giving you a low price. It's a very strange system that would only work if uh, if it was if the system was super complicated like it is. Like pharmacies should probably just be able to to charge the lowest pop price that they can for cash paying customers, but because of the way that the system is now, they can't. So I hope that kind of clears up. Um, I know it is complicated. Uh, I recommend, and I'll leave, leave a, uh, a link to it in the description, a video that Wall Street Journal made about um, how drug prices are set. So there are so many different players, and I think that uh, when the system is complicated, that is when the, um, customer gets screwed. So, uh, you know, I mean, you think about like what McDonald's does, they provide low priced hamburgers 
at, and they probably have a pretty pretty low margin, you know, not a real high margin, and the patient pays a cheap price. Like I think that's a, a business that's very kind of simple, you know, they're making hamburgers and they're charging a cheap price. Now if you look at um, pharmacies, so you would think if a pharmacy wants to buy Viagra, they would call Pfizer and buy Viagra. No. They call a wholesaler. And if the patient wants to come in and buy Viagra, they have insurance, they use an insurance card, and that card is how the pharmacy talks to a middle manager called a pharmacy benefit manager. That pharmacy benefit manager tells the pharmacy uh, what will be covered and sets the price. And on the other side, the pharmacy benefit manager will talk to Pfizer for a rebate. And that rebate will become, that will either be passed down to the customer in terms of having lower prices on their insurance coverage, or it will go into, um, go into the bottom line for the, for, the, for the PBM or pharmacy benefit manager increasing their profits, or a mixture of the two. So uh, I think that the, the reason that drug prices are so high is because of complexity. I think if it was simpler, that would be better. So I hope you all found this interesting. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. It would be awesome. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thanks a lot.